Welcome to Living Word, growing a family that experiences every promise of God. You're listening to another life-changing word from Pastor Scott Anderson. For more information, visit our website at livingwordonline.com. So the new store opened up at uh, Tempe Marketplace, and it was where women could find husbands, just get a husband at this place. So three single ladies, they enter on in. Right when you enter in, there's a sign on the door that says, hey, this store has six floors. The only rule is, is once you go to the next floor, you can never go backwards to the previous floor. So make sure you make your selection wisely. As they entered in, the first floor said, handsome husbands. Ladies go, well, you know, let's see what's on the second floor. So they go up to the second floor, and the second floor said, handsome husbands do have a good job. They're like, well, that's kind of cool. Let's see what's on the third floor. Third floor, it was handsome husbands who own a business, who are doing really well, and they're like, Let's see what's on that fourth floor. They go up to the fourth floor. Handsome husbands, doing well, who love children. They're like, well, let's see what's on that fifth floor. Fifth floor, very handsome husbands, very wealthy, very romantic, love children. And they're like, well, this is a fifth floor. Let's see what's on the sixth floor. They go up to the sixth floor, and it's just the roof of the building. Outside is a big sign with a counter on it. It says you are number 35,432,673. Thus proving that it's impossible to, pre- to please women. <laughs> then there was a store across the street for men to find a wife. Same thing, six floors, they go on in. And where, when you enter in, it says on this floor you'll find beautiful women who are very amorous. No, no man has ever seen the second floor because we're very simple. <laughs> I'll take that one. <laughs> Who's ready for the word today? Come on, somebody. Give the Lord a hand clap. Open up your Bibles to Matthew 12, 25. Throw that up on the screen for me, Miss Betts. Matthew 12, 25. Every kingdom, every country that is divided against itself will be ruined. And every city or every household divided against itself will not stand. We start a brand new series and I believe there's something that God has woken me up about, down being united, the United States of America, designed and built to be together, the greatest nation that the earth has ever seen. But we have to be aware of the enemy's uh, ploys, the enemy's ways. The enemy can't stop something. What the enemy, only weapon that ha- he has is a lie, a lie of division. That if you can divide something, that you can make a mess out of it. You know, a job that's divided, the managers and the bosses divided, and then the managers and the co-workers. Co-workers among each other divided, right? And then everyone's divided against the IT guy. There's division, and it makes a mess. A household that is divided is a mess. You got husband and wife divided, children and parent divided, right? You got child and child divided. Makes a ruin, makes a, a mess in life. You can look at even great sporting uh, 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 teams of the, of the time who were doing amazing. And as soon as a little division got in there, it made a mess. And they didn't live up to their potential. 1993, AFC Championship. You got the Houston Oilers, one of the greatest teams ever put together against the Buffalo Bills. At halftime, they were winning 35-3, to but right before halftime, the defensive coordinator, Buddy Ryan, began to battle and scream on national television with the offensive coordinator. Then the defensive player and the offensive were all battling and fighting. They go into the locker room divided, and in the second half, the Buffalo Bills came back and beat arguably one of the best teams ever. Why did they lose? Not because they weren't talented enough, not because they weren't the best team of that year. It was simply because division has the power to destroy. But united, when we're united, you become unstoppable. One horse can pull a thousand pounds, but two horses can pull four thousand pounds working together. But in the same way, two horses not working together can't even pull five hundred pounds. It's through our united. The devil starts very young. And begins to bring divisions. We all can remember back to going to school. And right away there was little cliques and little divisions within the school. I remember at Gilbert High. 
right? We had all the little different. We had the preppies. We had the jocks. We had the cheerleaders. We had the stoners. We had, we had the heavy metals, right? We, we even had the cowboys out there. We, we had all the different little divisions within the school, but then the schools are divided, right? It's, it's Gilbert, I can't stand the Westwood Warriors, and nobody can stand the snobs at Mountain View. But of course, right? Come on, I get an amen. And then Gilbert, but Gilbert was called the poo kickers, right? And so we all were divided within the city, right? There was, the enemy begins to divide us within the job, within the home, right? He is working hard to bring division. God said this in Genesis 11. He said, when mankind is united, nothing is impossible for them. When we are working together, there is nothing we can't do. And you think back to when the United States was united, right? You go back to the Revolutionary War, that a bunch of rum dums kicked out, discarded people that came over to America, banded together, united, and took on the greatest military the world had ever known at its time and beat it. That's what united can happen. Then they got united and came up with the greatest government that the world has ever known to put together the United States in, for World War II. The United States, after Pearl Harbor, became united. And in that united, my gosh, we took on, right, uh, uh, battles that we should have never been able to win on paper. We shouldn't have been able to win. We came up with, and this is fun, when you think about the nuclear bomb was come together and out of that, when you look through history of when things are invented, the nuclear bomb doesn't fit. It's way out of order, right? We didn't even have a, a Casio calculator at the time. There was no Amazon Prime for the love of all that's good and holy. And we got the nuke. Before the chalupa was invented, the nuke was out of place. Yet, when we came together united, right, things of impossibilities came forth. You think of how divided the United States right now through the news and the enemy and the media, right? Everything is about pitting you against somebody else, brother versus brother, everybody against everybody. There is a massive wave trying to get us divided by the enemy, knowing that you can't conquer the United States, but if we can divide it, it'll conquer itself. But our job as Christians is to bring unity I am, to those that are watching online, those that are watching right now, those of you that are here when you get home, share this. Because this is a message God put on my heart for the body of Christ. That the world will not come together. It is our job to be the glue that brings the United States of America, come on, back together. That we are the hands and feet of God. That it's not going to be our arguments and our things that we put online, but it's going to be the love of Jesus Christ working through each and every one of us that's going to bring this nation back to being united. Most divided we've ever, ever been in the last 50 years, in five decades, I believe, until all the way back to the 60s. That could be wrong, but I believe in my lifetime it's the most divided. We divide about everything. Right? We're divided about the climate. We're divided about what should be taught in the schools. We're divided about the border. We're divided about immigration. Right? We're, we're divided about when life starts. We're divided about guns. We're divided about marijuana. For the love of all this good and holy, we can't even figure out how many genders there are. Right? We are divided. Right? We got Team Jacob, Team Edward. My gosh, there are so many people in America that don't know what fine, authentic Mexican food is, and they don't like Taco Bell. There are problems in this nation. I drive by Del Taco, I'm like, you people don't even know. You're so confused right now in this nation. But you know what? If we, as the body of Christ, as Christians, can begin to pull together and be the glue, starting in our families at Thanksgiving, starting in our own personal worlds, in our jobs, in our businesses, on our online, and everything that we do, we begin to bring a sense of love and unity to this country. You'll be surprised what the difference we can make in a short amount of time, that the power of Jesus Christ has the power over this world to heal our land. Can I get an amen anywhere out there? <laughs> Write this one down. I think this was a revelation. It was revelation to me when God woke me up with this one right here. 
It sounds simple, yet it's so what this nation needs right now. Number one, united does not mean agreement. United does not mean agreement. The, the world right now is pushing that if you don't agree with me and what I believe in my opinions, you're evil and I hope you die in a sense, right? I, right? Unless you agree. Like we, we think for some reason we've been taught, or maybe it's our culture, that we have to be in total agreement in order to be united, and that's not true. If that was true, then none of us would ever be able to be united in anything. I, don't, I can't agree with you. We don't agree on everything. We don't agree on... Me and Holly don't agree. There's a ton of things that we don't agree on. Yet, we are united. Me and my brother. There are tons of things that me and my brother... We don't, we're different people with different opinions. Right? We don't agree on everything, but yet we are united. You can be united with your brother, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, your co-workers. We can be united in the United States of America without being in agreement about everything. You know that our founding fathers came together and they majorly had disagreements. They were so far apart. They both, all of them had different ideas of how to build a government and how to put the United States together. And they came together, they screamed, they hollered, they disagreed. But in the disagreement is the greatest strength. Because guess what? When your disagreement and your weakness and my strength and your strength and my weakness and we come together and we compromise and we come up with what we have today in our government, the best one ever to be put together under God. It was through the disagreements. We don't have to, we don't have to agree, right, to, to, to be. Me, my brother, and my dad, we were on our fishing trip. Jason reminded me as we were going over our sermons this week that we were on our fishing trip. It was the second morning, got up. They, they were having coffee. I don't agree. I don't like coffee. And so they're, they're having a little coffee. And then we began to hit a political topic. And wouldn't you know, three people born in the same house, me and Jason raised by the same father and the same mother, grew up together, worked together, spent our lives together, were so far in disagreement on this political topic. We were miles apart, then somebody was in the middle, and we were all, and we disagreed for an hour. We did. And I walked away, right? And I'm processing, because that's what I do. I like to hear and process it. And I came out knowing that I was right and they were wrong. Yeah. <laughs> they, they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, we're very united as a family, united as a church. We're united in our purposes and our goals. Yet we can have different opinions, yet still be united, me and Holly. We I disagree on it. Yeah, like, uh, just a while back, we're at, right for a day. Like I want to go see a, a movie on our, our day, and she wants to go hiking, and we're both pretty much set in what we want. Right? We're in dis we're not in no agreement, right? And we disagree, disagree, and finally we come into a compromise, and we go hiking. And so, <laughs> and we saw the movie. <laughs> You can have disagreements. We're all different people with different opinions. Opinion's the key thing. We all have different opinions on how to make the nation better and what we think is the best thing for homes and family. We all have our different opinions, but we can still be united together. This is years back. Me and Holly have been married maybe 12 years, and uh, she'd been a mother about 10 of those years. And Mother's Day, uh, you know, I always try to make it an epic day because I got my wife is just the most incredible mother, lays down her life. I have an incredible mother. I have an incredible mother-in-law. And so I try to make it pretty epic uh, as best to my ability. The year before, I had taken all the moms to Top of the Rock, and there was a big Mother's Day buffet. I didn't do the math ahead of time, not realizing that it was like $79 a person. I'm still making payments on that Mother's Day today. <laughs> so on this next year, Mother's Day, I'm like, what are you doing? We're going to go to the Arby's or something. And so... Right, I'm already trying to figure out all right, what restaurant I got to go that's going to be reasonable. And Holly on Friday comes up to me. She goes, you know what? Forget, forget going out to eat. What if we just do a barbecue at the house? Just grill, have all the moms over. And I went, you did not hear this from flesh and blood, but from the God himself spoke to you, woman. And right away, my mind began to, began to calculate. I went, okay, hamburgers, hot dogs, beans, potato chips, right? And I'm like, this is going to be under $50. I'm going to save like $300. I can get the brand new Xbox. I was so excited to get me something for Mother's Day. And so, 
So I said, okay, honey, I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to pick up the stuff right now. And she goes, what are you going to get? And it's almost like a woman can sense a cheapness among a man. You guys ever notice that? I don't know if your bosom begins to throb. I don't know what it is. Something happens and they can, they can sense a cheapness. And I went, well, I'm going to get you know, hamburgers and hot dogs, and get some beans and potato chips. And she goes, okay, well, I want chicken. And I went, okay, yeah, I'll get you. Like, that's not a big deal. I said, yeah, I'll get, I'll get you. In my mind, I'm like, that's another 25 bucks or so. That'd be fine. That's Mother's Day. I'll get her, I'll get her some chicken. That'd be no problem. Right? And she goes, it's the, I, I probably said it too fast because she goes, and I want steaks. And I don't want those cheap steaks that you usually buy. <laughs> that was a low blow. There was no reason for that. <laughs> Didn't ask for that. Nobody would be mean about my steaks. And I said, well, no, I'll get good steaks. She goes, no, I want ribeyes. I said, okay, yeah, I'll get, I'll, get, I'll get some ribeyes. And she goes, no, I want everyone to get their own ribeye. And I went, no, no, I'll cut them up and everybody can have a hot dog and hamburger and some ribeyes. <laughs> And she goes, no, I want everyone to have their own ribeye. I go, well, not the kids. Kids, don't. They don't deserve it. They don't even do their chores. Why would I get them a ribeye? She goes, no, I want them to have their own ribeye. And I'm like, mm, I'm fine. I'm doing a ribeye. I'm like, no, I'm doing the math. I'm like, okay. Whew. I'm taking a deep breath. But then I'm, I'm kind of a control. Right? I like to control. My wife will tell I like it. And so I go, well, good, fine. But I'm not getting a ribeye. And she goes, well, you love steak. I go, nope, not anymore. I'll never eat steak again. I'm not having a ribeye. She's like, fine, don't get a ribeye. I said, fine. So I'm, I'm about to leave, and she goes, oh, don't forget, I also want snow crab. <laughs> I blinked real slow and hard, and I took a breath. And my goal now switched from trying to get an Xbox to not having the police show up that night. I, I was really, <laughs> I took a breath. And I said, fine, I'll get you snow crab. I'll get everybody, we'll have snow crab, we'll have snow crab. Right? And then she goes to me, she goes, well, and don't forget to get, you know, we need potato salad. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll get potato salad. And she says to me, she goes, I want you to home make me some potato salad for Mother's Day. We're going to pause right there for a second. I've never made potato salad in my life. I've never said I could. I never said there was a recipe. No one in my family has ever made homemade potato salad. If you were to go back in the lineage of the Andersons, all the way back to Noah, there is not a single Anderson that has ever made homemade potato salad. I've never had it from her house. I didn't know any of her family has ever made homemade potato salad. And she's asking me to make homemade potato salad for her as an act of love. And I slowly and calmly said, I love you very much, honey. But I have to let you know this from the bottom of my heart. I'll never make homemade potato salad. I really won't. Ever for my, not this life or in eternity. Just so you know that if you and the kids were ever kidnapped and the kidnappers wanted homemade potato salad, I hate to tell you right now, but you all would die. I would not make homemade potato salad. If getting into heaven... Man, I had to make homemade potato salad for Jesus Christ. I would burn in hell before I made homemade potato salad. And she smiles. She goes, okay, you don't have to overreact. We differ on opinions. And we're in total unity. Number two, write this down. Number two. United on purpose or destination, you can disagree on how to get there. We have disagreements on how to get there. Most Americans today, I would say in the upper 90%, want an amazing America. They want unity, right? We, most people don't, don't want to have injustices, right? We want to get along. We want a, 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 just an incredible America. This is what most of us want. We just have a different way or opinion on how to get there. And opinion is a key word because I know that my political views in the last 10 years have changed and my political views in the next 10 years will continue to change because I'm a person that grows, that knows that I do not have everything figured out. I don't have all the answers, nor do you have all the answers, nor do your coworkers have all the answers. It's no more than opinions. We have the same destination, but we may disagree on how to get there. Right? In my family, me and Holly, we, we are united, yet we disagree on a lot of things. 
But we are united on the fact that Jesus Christ is the Lord of our home. We are united that our kids will grow up in God's house. We are united on making a great atmosphere for my children. We are united that we make this a marriage amazing for our lifetime. We are united, though we may not agree on a lot of things. We are united, me and Jason. Have a lot of disagreement. Well, we, disagree. we never fight, but we disagree on a lot of things. Yet we are united. We are in the way we're built. God put us together perfectly. There's two, like it's almost the perfect union when we think about it. Like with the, our strengths and our weaknesses. I'm the guy that when a great idea comes, I'm the guy that's like, let's do it this week. I want this Sunday. And I'm trying to get her. And Jason's the guy that goes, hey, what if we did it in a year and a half? What if we got some committees together? right? Did some studies, right? Some of you are like, yeah, right, work it out. They're like, we wouldn't even want it in a year and a half, right? And then we come together in our disagreements, compromise, and God seems to work out the perfect plan. We went through COVID that way. We were both the same, and we begin, we work it out, right? Jason is very strong, where I'm very weak, and I am strong, where he is weak. We are united on taking this city and state for Jesus Christ. We are united in touching the world. We are united every weekend of getting people saved. We are united in helping homes and families. We are united in encouraging you every week with the word of God and building you up and getting you ready. We are united. We may not agree on how to get there, but we're very united in that. We have many different ideas of how to get there. You know, we, if I said, hey, let's all go to Florida, that's our purpose. That's our destination. There's a gajillion ways to get to Florida. Some of you may, may drive. Some of you may fly. Some of you might drive up through Washington, come on down. Some of you go through Montana. Some of you go, I want to see the Rockies. Some of you might decide to take a boat, a train, a bus. You might decide to take a rowboat. You might decide to walk. You're right beside, right? There's a gajillion ways to get there, right? Which way's right? I don't know. Here's what I know. We're all going for the same destination. Same thing for the body of Christ. We know what our destination is, and we know what our call is. Our call is to reach and change the world through love. That's our call. Our call is to bring people together, not to divide people. We are here on this planet to love people, no matter what their opinions are. See, it's very sad where the media has pushed us, the social media has pushed us, that if you have a different political opinion than me, then I don't like you and I can't be around you. I can't talk to you. I hate you, right? Well, there's so much people I hate, right? I hate this party and I hate that party, right? But isn't that pride? Isn't that one of the things that God hates? Pride says, I know it all. I got to figure it out. I know how to do this nation better than anybody. That's not God's love. Because guess what? None of us in this room have it totally figured out. We don't know. Like, we're not in the place of our Senate and our Congress. We don't know the stuff that they know. We don't know the stuff our president knows, the vice president. We don't know any of those things. We don't know. We just know what the media chooses to tell us and not tell us. And then we want to get upset about that. We may disagree on a lot of things. But can we be united on the fact that we want this nation, one nation under God, indivisible? That's what we want. I want one nation that touches the world. That we're a nation that's different. We're a, a Christ nation. A nation that, nation that loves people that builds people up, that we're a picture of what God is. We're that picture going forth that no one in this room has it all figured out. We should be able to hang out with people with different political opinions than us, be able to talk to them, listen to them, grow from them, right? We don't have to be divided. News, guess what? You don't get to tell me who I hate and who I don't like, who I'm upset with and who I'm not upset with. I love every single person that comes across my path, no matter what your political opinion is. I can talk to you, I can encourage you, I can build you up, I can love you because I'm a child of the king. I am somebody who does not tear people apart, but I put people together because that's what I was called to do. In the office, it's not the vaxxers versus the anti-vaxxers and the maxxers against the others. No, it's the children of God bringing everybody together in one place. That's what we do. We're the voice that pulls people together in this life, in this world. You know, it's funny to watch the political parties and what they do. You know, if one political party likes something, the other one hates it. You know, right? If one said the sky is blue, the other one, no, it's green. It's orange. 
okay, you're right, you're right. It's just funny how both, and I'm saying both sides do that. It's just really funny. And it's funny to see, because I believe this in my whole heart. I believe that there has to be places that we gather together where politics are removed. I do, I believe that. You know, we went to the football game on Thursday night, saw the Packers and the Cardinals. And you know, we all, half of us disagreed on which team we wanted to, to, to have. We, we were disagreed, yet we were united that we all wanted to gather together, scream and holler, and have a good time. We were united that we all wanted to have a very good game, which we got an epic, amazing game. They were, we were, we, right, we didn't agree, we didn't have the same opinion. Some got hot dogs, some got popcorn. We, we had a lot of different disagreements, yet we came together united, right? And I think that sporting events in those places, no politics in that, right? And I think church is the same thing. That you got to have a church where we can gather together as Republicans and Democrats and Independents and as liberals, right? And gather together under one unifying thing that Jesus Christ is Lord. You don't need me getting up here and wasting time on my politics, my opinions. What you do need me is to give you the truth and the fact that God loves every single one of us, that God has redeemed us, that God's grace is sufficient, that I can change the world through my faith, that I love my neighbor and my sister and my brother, that I'm an encourager, that I forgive, that I am somebody that goes forth into this lifetime as a light, not a divisive person, but as a light. That's, watch, I'm gonna give you two scriptures as we close here. I got a couple minutes. Throw those up there. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say. And that's what I'm saying today, that we agree together. We don't agree on everything, but we can agree on what comes out of our mouth. What we say on social media is things that pull people together, that there are no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and in thought, that we are united, that guess what? I don't share the opinion with everybody else, and that's all right. But I am united and we are united in the love of Jesus Christ. Go to Galatians. So there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, Democrat or Republican. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Said if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And you enjoy the promises and inheritance of God. Come on, somebody. We come into the house of the Lord. Not with our political opinions. But we come in this house with the truth of knowing that we are, there's no slave, there's no free, right? there's no male, no female, there's no Republican, no Democrat. We come together unified in the love of Jesus Christ. That we know that guess what? God's word is the only truth on this planet. And I know that we as a body of Christ have been called to unite these states of America to bring the United States back together that we may disagree on how to make America amazing we can agree that we all want it and though we are have different opinions on how to get there it is our different opinions that make us strong that make us great it's what makes us a great nation there's been many a nation where people didn't get to have their opinions and those have fallen. But it is America where we get to have an opinion spoken in love that we can bring this nation back together. Can I get a big amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you don't know where you're going to end up one day when you die, I want to give you that opportunity to get saved. It's simple. It's easy. You don't have to jump through a whole bunch of hoops. You don't have to be perfect. All you have to do is believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and was raised from the dead. I get it. You're going to make some more mistakes. We all do. But it doesn't take away your salvation. When I believe, I'm saved. Say this prayer with me. Believe it in your heart and you're saved. Dearly Father, I ask you right now, come into my life, be my Lord, and be my Savior. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and was raised from the dead. In Jesus' name, Amen. You're saved. Make sure you get yourself in a church. Be blessed. We'll see you next week.